Hello and welcome back. In this example, I'm going to show you how to cut out hair on a simple background. Now, this happens anytime your background is out of focus or maybe you have a light colored hair on a dark background, dark hair on a light background, or you just have a relatively simple background in general. Now, we've done this a couple of times throughout this tutorial. I just wanted to make a specific section just on simple backgrounds and then we'll get a little bit more complex. Here in Photoshop, let's go ahead and open up our image. We're in chapter three, section three, cut out here on a simple background. Let's go ahead and open this image up. And I'm gonna hit F for full screen. Now, again, we've talked about this before, but when you're talking about cutting hair out, hair is what's known as a soft edge. In other words, it's, it's a very variable edge. You know, not something you would select out with the pen tool or a lasso tool or anything like that. Those are for harder edges. We want to make sure we select out here soft edge tools, channels would work, select color range would work, that sort of thing. This is a great place for select and mask also. But for the body, we want to use a tool that's better for harder edges. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. We're going to cut out the body and then we're going to come back to the hair. We'll speed it up so you don't have to wait. Well, there we have it. We just outlined our subject with the pen tool. Now, if you'd like any help with the pen tool, we have a great pro tutorial called How to Master the Pen Tool in Photoshop. There are so many different uses for it. So now that we have most of our subject outlined, we'll go back into Photoshop. We're gonna still, with our pen tool selected, we're gonna right click and I'm gonna go to Make Selection. And we're gonna feather that by one pixel. Let's hit OK. And we're gonna go ahead and click on our layer mask icon. And that's going to do a really nice job cutting our subject out of the background. As you can see, we have a very nice clean edge all the way around our subject. Now, the only area we have left is our subject's hair. But thankfully, it's on a simple background, so it's going to be relatively straightforward. We're going to hold shift and click on our layer mask. That's going to temporarily disable your layer mask. Now it's time to work on the hair. Now, as I analyze this image, I see we have a light colored background and dark colored hair on the background. It's not very dark, but it's enough of a contrast to allow us to use channels. And whenever you can use channels to cut out hair, that is the preferred method. The selections are simply just, they contain more detail than other ways of making selections. So let's jump into our channels. Here we're clicking on channels. You can also go to window and down to channels. Let's take a look at our red green and blue channel. Now, you can see the red channel, our hair is light, the green it gets a little darker, and here in the blue channel it gets even darker. So the blue channel is where we want to be. Let's click and drag that to the new channel icon, and I'm going to hit Control or Command L, which is going to bring up our levels. I can choose my white point eyedropper and just click right outside of there. And that basically just makes that white. There we go. Now this is pretty good. I'm going to make my darks just a little bit darker so we can see that contrast there. But as you can see, I'm going to be able to use this selection for all this hair over here and probably quite a bit of this hair as well. Although I'm going to make another channel adjustment for this hair over here because it's a little bit too similar to my background. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. Now again, to turn this into a selection, you can hold Control or Command, click on the thumbnail or click on this little selection icon. So back here on our layers, let's click on our layer mask. Keep in mind, we just selected the light area, which is in fact our background. So we wanna to go to select and then down to inverse. There we go. And we're gonna use our brush tool to paint white on our layer mask. Let's hit Control or Command H to hide our selection. There we go. And now we are able to paint back all this hair with so much detail in it. It's just fan. Fantastic. I can't believe it's pretty easy. <laughs> I was just like, wow, that looks great. And as you can see, I mean, we are just doing really, really well on the amount of detail on our transparent background. All right, we'll just paint it back a little bit more. Sometimes you have to go over areas a couple of times just to make sure they're all filled in. Well, that looks great. Now, as you may have noticed, because this hair is light in color, it did not get selected 
So we're going to have to work on this area just a little bit differently. So let's go back to our channels. We'll just create another channels adjustment here. If I go to my channels now, I'm going to see information based on what my image currently looks like. So we want to go back to our layers and just make sure we disable our layer mask to continue working on those channels. Let's hold shift and click on that layer mask. Just disables it again. We'll go back to our channels. I know my blue channels might where we want to start, but this time I'm going to just kind of amplify our levels so it'll work over there. Let's make a duplicate of that blue channel. Hit control or command L again. All right, and this time I'm going to just take my black point here and we're just really going to push it as far as we possibly can. There we go. And that looks pretty good. So let's hit OK. So at this point, you can see we've just really pushed our blacks very, very far. So we've got a lot. Basically, it's pushed all of our hair towards black. Now, we do have some of this lighter color in the background and that we want to take care of because if I make a selection out of the lights and then inverse it, it's still going to include some of the background. So here on the channels, again, if I just choose my brush tool, I can paint white on my channel. Okay, you can paint on your channels. It's, you know, kind of like a layer. Uh, again, always make sure this is on a copy though. If you were to paint on one of your actual color channels, it would, uh, it would permanently affect your image. So make sure it's on a copy. So with my brush tool, we're going to paint white. And you can see if I just paint white, with normal mode, it just kind of paints everywhere. So we're going to change our mode to overlay and the light areas are just going to get lighter and the dark areas are going to stay dark. It's like the whole deal with the overlay mode. All right, there are not a ton of uses for changing your brush mode, uh, your tool modes in general. Mostly I suggest changing the mode of your layers but this is one of those uses that's a standout. I don't have to do everywhere on the image because this is the only area uh, that was giving me any issues before. So basically we're done affecting this channel. Now I know this is obviously looks, uh, you know, not right. Like you wouldn't want your final image to look like this, but keep in mind, we're just using that to make a selection of the hair. So let's hold control or command and click there on the thumbnail. Keep in mind this makes the light areas visible. So we'll go to select and then down to inverse, selecting the dark areas. And let's go back to our layers. We'll click on our layer mask here and now we'll paint white. Let's hit control or command H to hide your selection temporarily. And there we go. I'm just going to undo that a couple of times. I just want to zoom in so you can actually see. So you can see here the hair has a little bit of transparency in it. Okay. Now we'll just paint white and I'm able to fill that area in. Okay. So there's the before and the after. Before and the after. I wanted to zoom in because it's not like incredibly apparent because it's a light, it's light colored hair on a light background, but it, it really is making a big difference there. Well, we've painted it in. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask and check out my layer mask now. It looks great. Look at all that information we have on the channels there. Here we have our hair visible, but it looks just a little bit um, like grainy. And the reason is because we really, uh, we really cranked our levels up quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to our layer mask and let's just grab that blur tool. Okay, just a little bit of blur on there. It's just going to help that hair look like it's natural and properly defined. And then also keep in mind that we're going to blur some of this part of our image too, because some of the, uh, some of our subject was slightly out of focus. Now, the great thing about this is this is not actually blurring your image. This is just blurring the mask. There we go. And you can blur it more or less depending on what areas are in focus or out of focus. There we are. Let's hold Alt or Option and take a look at this again. So you can see like this area is out of focus. So I'm just going to use my blur tool a little bit more. Again, I'm on the mask. So it's just blurring the mask. It's not blurring the layer. That's a little out of focus there too. So we'll just blur that a little bit more. Okay, down here is more out of focus, so that's going to get more blur. 
can see this is kind of in focus, so that's going to stay. There we go. Out of focus, so that gets the blur. And we are good to go. That is so, so nice. So let's just grab a solid color fill layer. We'll go to white. We'll pop it right underneath our subject. And here we can see I can make our uh, layer a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. And you can see our subject is really well cut out. And we know if we're going to put our subject on a darker background, we still know how to do that because we can use clipping masks. So let's create a new layer. Option Command G is going to clip that. And then here you simply sample inside of the hair and paint towards the outside. There we are. And you're going to see it's going to take care of your lighter areas. So no matter if you're putting your subject on a light colored background or a dark colored background, you'll be able to make it look perfect, especially now that, now that we know we can use clipping masks. And I'm going relatively fast here, <laughs> just kind of show you how it works. Our, our job is done. I'm just making sure that we kind of darken this up. If you're doing this for real, you'd want to zoom in and use a little bit more detail. All right. Well, let's delete that layer. Just wanted to show you guys how to do it. There we go. But well, we've gone over that in more detail. Where the, well, there we have it. Our subject is completely cut out of the background. We have a relatively simple background that we started with. And with our subject cut out, we have all of the detail, including individual strands of hair. Thank you so much for watching. In our next section, we're going to show you how to cut out hair on a complicated background. It's going to be so much fun. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next section.